Anderson, two on one. He'll drop it to the circle, shot to goal! Anderson to the back attack, and the team's two top scorers are in sync tonight. One-timer from the high slot, Case measures it up and makes the wow. save as he cuts off the angle. Hendrickson across the line, gets tackled there in the slot, gets right back up, shoots and scores! Garrett Hendrickson with a nifty move from his knee. He goes around Paige Scoop, sends it home over the shoulder, and it's 6 nothing CRC. Every time the pipe pings another goalie, here's Johnny's horn sing. It's the Chill Coaches Show. Rick and Scotty are talking puck with Coach Dagenhart, chill players, and even the opposition from Buffalo Wild Wings. It's a 60-game season, and you're playing good competition every night, so we look at every weekend as a new opportunity, and... I uh, don't like to get too far ahead of ourselves. We focus on Friday, then we focus on Saturday and take them one at a time. Now, here are two guys that are so excited that there will finally be an NHL season that they started writing Valentines to Gary Bettman and Donald Fair. Don't choke on those heart-shaped candies, boys. Here's Rick Frankie and Scotty Grant. Well, Scotty Grant's here. Rick Frankie out uh, sounding like the guy in the Pro Bowl. We're not feeling too well today, so... Um, I'm going to be here with Coach A.J. Dagenhart. we got the boys here tonight. Going to have Alexi Moustadiermi, uh, Derek Flynn on tonight, and uh, just a cast of others as well. Reminder, it's family and I here at Buffalo Wild Wings. $1.99 kids menu. Come on out here. Always good on a Wednesday night here just at Buffalo Wild Wings. And, heck, you could even listen to us if you'd like. Hi, A.J., what do you think about <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, why not a little bit? We might have something entertaining to say oh, for so, you. <laughs> we might have something. Oh, come on now. Yeah, uh, I tell you, that's uh, I, 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 I just took that one to heart, can't you tell? <laughs> real, real upset. Well, well, Coach, let's uh, talk about and recap uh, last weekend's series of games with Minot. And uh, pretty competitive overall. You guys, of course, uh, taking the one on Friday night, 4-2. to two, And, uh, of course, everybody wants to talk about, you know, Mac attack and those three goals in that short period of time. Was it two minutes and 25 seconds, I think, he had that hat trick? Yeah, it was a, it was a crazy fast hat trick. I think it was two-something, but uh, obviously – impressive by him and to see you know the biggest part was was a big response we went down two nothing in that game uh guys kind of uh took it upon themselves to get fired up and, and give a good response there so anytime you go down too early in a game to come back and score four and answer like that's going to be a big thing for your team so that was a impressive response by mac impressive response by the entire team in general well not only that i mean i thought you know looking at the numbers of course i wasn't at the game but looking at the numbers you guys were right with them in shot totals offensive production time of possession in the zone i think you guys did a good job there from what i can see and it just really seemed like you know in general even though saturday night didn't go the way you wanted it to uh, the team really knew the importance of this series and what it meant to at least get a win uh, going into that with into that weekend yeah absolutely uh, one of the big things that we stressed with the team before the weekend was limiting shots limiting scoring chances against and i think we did a pretty honestly i think it's probably the best weekend we've had of the season so far in terms of our team defense um from friday to saturday night honestly there wasn't a lot of difference um, outside of that first period on friday night i think the guys uh the response we had in the first period was you know that was a little it was a little back and forth the first period but the last five periods of that series were pretty much dead even i think on on saturday night they were able to capitalize on the few chances that they did have unfortunately we weren't and that was probably the difference in that game this is the chill coaches show on the cooley region sports network scotty Graham with the head coach of the cooley region chill aj dagenhart and aj you know you talked about the defense it was a focus for you guys i know it was stressed heavily a couple weeks ago uh and and really the, the talent that's back there i mean we've seen it all season but the last time you guys played Minot, I really thought that they out-physicaled you guys. Uh, and this weekend series, however, from what I heard from some of the fans and some of the things that I've read, you guys really showed up and definitely wanted to get that physical edge. And Friday night, you took it to them. Yeah, you know what? Guys are buying into what I'm teaching right now. I think it was a little bit of a refresher uh, to some of them maybe with what the, the change that happened here. I think guys are, you know, we're, we're going harder in practice, I think, but in term. Uh, in terms of that, guys are guys are seeing that they got to go harder in order to uh, be able to perform at that level on the weekend. And guys were getting up and down the ice while well. we changed their forecheck up to a two-one-two. 
Uh, guys were getting up and down the ice. They were getting in their defenseman's face. They were putting bodies on. They were finishing checks. So little things like that all add up, and, you know, when we, when we start putting the whole package together, good things are going to happen. Yeah, let's talk about that too, AJ. I mean, coming in, uh, the announcement made that you're the head coach. You did get to join us last week. We had some questions, of course, prepared. I'm sure <laughs> that course. I'm sure you were aware of that. How are you feeling, by the way? You feeling better? Feeling good. Feeling good. much better. Good, and, and we're, we're glad to have you back, but getting into the serious aspect of, you know, the position you're taking, the responsibility, mm -hmm. and then how the players are responding, it sounds like overall pretty good. Uh, what, are, what are the biggest things you still see, though, for improvement for this team so far? Uh, well, right now, one, I see, I see the guys are re-energized. I think there's been a newfound uh, uh, energy within the team, and that's a good thing right now. I think the focuses for the team uh, from here on out are probably, one, going to be in the defensive end, I think. Uh, we, we set our goal to 35 shots against. We had been up in the, I don't know, 45, 50 range for a couple of games there. Uh, we ended up being around 30 last week, and so that's obviously a big plus right there. Uh, we need to simplify our game. We need to get more shots on the net. Um, they don't always have to be a pretty shot from five feet away to be a goal in this league, or any league for that matter. So simplifying the game, getting pucks to the net. Uh, little things like that, and I think to, just getting our feet moving, getting up. We want to be an active team on the forecheck. We want to be a team that's getting there or getting in there and getting up in the other team's face, getting in their defense's face and making it hard for them to make plays against us. Uh, in, in turn, is that going to give us some problems occasionally or an odd man rush against occasionally? Yeah, but uh, I like our chances with that, and I think we're going to get a lot more offense, as you've seen, out of it. So. Uh, the one thing I heard from the guys last week that they were very adamant about that they thought was great is that you don't give them breaks. Mm -hmm. You don't let them think about really the mistakes. You kind of teach it and let them learn on their own and just keep them moving. Yep. There, there's not a lot of stoppage. There, there, there's a continuation of, you know, the beginning and the middle of the end. There's actually a resolution at the, at the end. And uh, Is that is that kind of what you're hearing from the guys in practice, too, that they enjoy that aspect of what you're teaching them right yeah, now? Yeah, absolutely, and that's kind of the way I've always been, and I'm a believer, is kids at this age, they're going to learn from their mistakes. If they're not allowed to ever make a mistake, I'm not sure they're ever going to learn. So. Uh, practices for me, I like to, I like there to be a lot of flow to them. I like them to get up and down the ice. Are there going to be mistakes at times during the drill? Yeah, but they always play themselves out. And we've kind of seen that so far in practice uh, the last couple of weeks. I think guys have been getting up and down the ice. They have been making mistakes, but at the same time, they correct themselves as they go, and we'll rehash them at the end. So it's pretty, you know, it, it, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing. You can, you can look at it either way, but... I, I like my teams to learn through their mistakes. I like them to get better. I like them to see what they're doing wrong. And, um, you know, good things are happening because of it, I think. It, now, you know, you kind of put on a little bit of the GM hat with this job, too. Am I right? Are you yeah. kind of playing that role as well? Yeah, absolutely. We actually made a trade uh, earlier this week for Kevin Becker from the Bismarck Bobcats, which, in my opinion, was a pretty big pickup for us. It was a... Uh, uh, kind of a weird deal. We sent Travis Underwood to Amarillo with a clause that they would have to <laughs> they would have to pay four thousand dollars or some sort. I don't even know the exact amount. A, a large amount of money to trade him back into our division. Um, we kind of did a three-way deal with them with Bismarck that they could have Underwood if we uh, got Becker from them, and we ended up getting them for a little cheaper than we thought we would. And uh, he, he's been here this week. He's been doing good. He's a pleasure to have on the ice, and I think he's going to help out this club a lot. Yeah, I guess talk about what he brings to the table as far as his attributes, and then where do you place him on the team right away? Well, he brings a lot of speed, brings a lot of tenacity to the club. He comes from a winning a uh, winning organization that was uh, off to a pretty good start and uh, in a pretty good spot right now, frankly. So, um, I, you know what, I look at him as a top couple line guy on this team, and I think he's going to help out and give us a little punch up there. His numbers right now, I want to say he's 1-9 or 1-10, somewhere around there, and uh, about 30 games, but I think that production is going to go up with this club. He's probably going to be in a little bigger role with us than he was with... Uh, Bismarck, who's a little bit older of a club and got a more experienced team. So I think it should be a good situation for for himself, for us as a club, and I, I think the fans are going to enjoy him here. All right, well, let's move on to Saturday night's game now. You know, we got the positive out of the way, a little <laughs> bit of a negative on Saturday night. However, again, you know, really, if you look at the numbers, you guys weren't out physical by my not. I, and, and I guess if you want to take anything away from the series in general, and I think you have to be happy with the fact that the team wasn't intimidated. Yeah. Yeah. They came out to play, and they were ready to go. Yeah, definitely happy with the series, happy with the compete level. Actually, I sat uh, 
sat in the office this morning and for about two hours, I would say, watch video of Saturday's game. And um, I, I came to the conclusion, actually, I watched it with Matt Massey, who's helping me out a little bit here. And uh, I, I actually think we may have played better after watching that video than we did on the previous night. Uh, we got off to a little bit of a slow start of that game. Uh, obviously didn't want to go down a couple goals to start, but weren't able to bounce back, weren't able to get the bounces, and that's the way it goes sometimes. I think the guys competed hard, though. I think overall it was a good six, six periods of hockey on the weekend. So, And, you know, you still continue to get pretty good defense, pretty good goaltending from Blake. Uh, you know, and, and, and it just seems like, you know, after that weekend series, now you run into the best team, one of the best teams in the NHL, the Austin Bruins. Do you think maybe this team could be getting some pieces together and getting some getting some motivation at the right time to play a team like the Austin Bruins? Yeah, absolutely. I think this team's ready to play them. And I think, uh, you know, the last couple of times we have played them, we've been right there down to the wire. And uh, you know, last time we were in Austin, we were up a couple, or we were up one goal going into the third period. We weren't able to hold on to it, but I think that's one thing this team's uh, learning and learning sort of fast with me right now is how to win in the third period, how to hold on to games, how to sort of battle through and keep the lead when you have the lead. So I think uh, I think this weekend's going to be a really big test for us. It's really big in the standings. It's really big in a lot of aspects for us. So it's the Chill Coaches Show on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Scotty Graham with the head coach of the Cooley Region Chill. Uh, the one and the only A.J. Dagenhart. We'll have Derek O'Flynn on at some point, Alexi Mustaniemi, and also we're going to have Hunter Anderson back on the show. And I think all these guys, appearance number two, I think Alexi two and a half, maybe four, because I see him in here. I think he just comes in to eat people's food. <laughs> That's just my thought. I love Lexi, but I, I kind of think he sneaks in for that. It's just my <laughs> my opinion. I, I, I'm looking at the scoring, you know, for the team, and obviously Mac is really just on fire right now. He's now second in the league in goals. Uh, you still got some consistency from the blue line, you know, with O'Flynn at a plus five, Derek Smith at a plus eight, Lang at a plus three, uh, and, then, and then you look at Hunter. I mean, he's a plus nine from the forward position, uh, and, and I mean, a lot of these guys developing, kind of getting the chemistry going on, and now you add a guy like Becker who could add a little bit more of a punch. I mean, it's just kind of interesting right now. You don't want to forget Footy because Footy's had a good year and he's been pretty consistent all season. I, I mean, I, I think this team is, you know, though the record is not where you would like it to be, I think there's a lot of building blocks here, and I think that something could be, you know, could be had here through the stretch run. Yeah, I think so too. We're obviously at a big point in the season right now where you don't want to give away games and you want to be turning that corner. And we have built ourselves a little bit of a hole to climb out of, but I think this team's capable of it. I know in the locker room, guys seem to have a new energy, have to or seem to be excited about the opportunity in front of them to sort of be the underdog and claw back and uh, we embrace that we're looking forward to that and I think good things are in front of us uh, you know will we be able to get the job done only time will tell but I think there is a good foundation here and I think there is a lot of good players here and it's just a matter of putting the pieces of that puzzle together so a uh, question about the goaltending position now Blake has played well you know Devin has been on and off and you know he's had some moments that honestly could be improved upon uh, do you see yourself maybe adding another goaltender at some point here possibly to add a third so then you can give Blake some nights off because right now he's kind of been a workhorse for you. I know that in this line of work in hockey, I mean, you want to go with the hot hand, but sometimes the hot hands, even in time, you look at some of the legends in the NHL, you know, the Patrick Waz need a break from time to time. Uh, I tell you what, uh, Ahashik, he always needed a backup because he never knew he was going to get hurt. You look at guys like that, I mean, and, I, and I'm not comparing Blake Case to these guys at this time in his career, but you look at that position and the beating that these guys take, I mean, are you looking at that just for that reason? Yeah, obviously you want to keep your, your goaltenders fresh at all times. Uh, you never want them to get too tired or fatigued or complacent or whatever it is in the net at the time. Um, in terms of looking for a goaltender, I'll say this, I'm always looking for somebody out there who uh, can improve the club um, or can help out the club in one way or another. But uh, right now, yeah, I'm definitely looking. Uh, is that going to come across? Who knows at this point? A lot of the top teams are sort of hanging on to their top goalies right now, and a lot of the <laughs> surprise, bottom teams surprise. are kind of, you know, seeing, seeing who they can deal them to. So uh, it's, it's not an easy position to really replace midseason. We are always open to it. Uh, what happens, happens, I guess. But at the moment, I don't have anybody in line or anybody planned and, uh, and coming in. So we'll see what happens with that. But like you said, we, al we always do want to keep them rested. I have talked with... Uh, I spoke with Blake Cates individually the other day, and uh, 
kind of told him where we're at as a team, where we're at with him, uh, that he is going to be a little bit of a workhorse down the stretch for us, and uh, he, he seemed embrace, good with it. He, yeah, yeah, he embraces it. He embraces it. He seemed excited. He wants the ball in his court, so to speak, and uh, I think things will be good. I think things will be good. So. Speaking, of, speaking of embracing, I'm looking forward to embracing some food here at Buffalo Wild Wings <laughs> at some point, and hopefully I'm not on camera for that, even though <laughs> now I, I, I just want to say, you know, on the Cooley Region Sports Network, we have – a full video production now, which you can see here on the Chill Coaches Show tonight. I want to thank Timmy Culp and Rick Frankie uh, getting all that set up now for the fans that are watching this network. It's fantastic and a big step um, in our progression. Speaking of progression, let's talk about Austin a little bit. It's going to be a big series over the weekend, AJ. You know what you're getting into with this Austin team. I mean, they have been impressive all year. Uh, they've been consistent. Uh, they play pretty good defense. Offensively, they've been stellar in that power play. Mm -hmm. It's just wicked. You look at the numbers, 22, 5, and 5, 59 points on the season. You know, they have some issues, though, away from their rank. They're 13, 4, and 3 on the season. Uh, so what are you looking at, and what do you think you can exploit? Uh, well, one, we want to get up in their face. We want to be a team that's active, given their defense down low. I know there are, they are uh, in their offensive zone. They like to pinch their D. They like to be active. Uh, I think we can create odd man rushes through that. I think it's very big that uh, we exploit that a little bit. I think it's very big that we slow them up through the neutral zone coming into our own end. Uh, they obviously got good team speed. They got a dynamic offense that can bury the puck if given the opportunity. So we got to limit the chances that we uh, do give them. We got to slow them up through the neutral zone. I think. Uh, you know, I think it, it's going to be a big series for us. we got to be ready to go. we got to be ready to get pucks into their zone and kind of keep the game simple. But at the same time, we got to be up in their face and uh, getting after their D-men, attacking them in their own end and making them play where they're uncomfortable, and that's in their own end. Yeah, first of the power play at 25%, and then you look at the guys. They have the league's top scorer, in Brandon Walleen. Uh, he's got 50 points, a plus 8. A.J. Reed at 41 points, a plus 7. He's 7th in the league. John Simonson, a plus 14, 36 points sixth in the league and then CJ Smith is fifth in the league in goals scored at 20 goals so offensively yes we know the, the credentials you know and then you talk about Cody Dixon on the blue line who's first in the NHL in scoring D so you look at Austin and it looks like a big mountain to climb but at the same time you guys you, you guys have played these guys really tough all season and you don't give them a lot of leeway where in some other series this season it's almost been too easy for the Austin Bruins and I think the Cooley Region Chill match up pretty well with them overall. Yeah I think we definitely match up well with them we have had a couple of close games with them and we're looking forward to a couple couple more close ones with them um, but like you said I think we got a non-stop we got to be in their face we got to be an active team and we got to be giving them fits down low in their zone they're not a team that uh, is comfortable playing in their own end. We got to get pucks in there, and we got to get guys on the pucks in their end. In terms of their their power play and whatnot, they obviously got a dynamic power play. So as much as we can stay out of the penalty box and limit their time on ice is going to be key for us. So, are you impressed with the fact you know they're coached very aggressively? However, they don't seem to spend a ton of time in the box. And and, and is it because they? know how to do things at the right time per se or they coach that well where it's just kind of like we can get a ticky tack here it's yeah. not going to get called I mean I, I mean you've seen them up close I mean is, is it that fact because the Austin Bruins I know from the last couple of years like to fight and they like to get in your <laughs> face and this year they've kind of taken a step back a little bit from that well they got an older veteran team they're a very very old veteran team so they got actually. smarter they, is what you're yeah saying. exactly another year's experience in the league and you gotta help me you get you got a wise old team but I mean it's a, it's a good group of guys that they have there guys that know what they're doing on the ice they know when to get in your face and be chippy and they know when to take care of business with the puck so they've uh Kudos to them. They've had a good season this far, and uh, we're looking to take a couple points from them this weekend. Well, and, and you talked about, you know, people look at this team and what's the Achilles heel. And, uh, you know, you talked about getting in their face and maybe making them make mistakes because their penalty kill is only 12th in the league at an 85% clip. So you talked about them not really liking to be in their own end of the ice. And obviously, you know, those really offensive teams that, and I tell you a lot of hockey fans can say this, you've got your really offensive teams that, aren't defensively very strong and you can exploit them that way. Do you think Austin falls in line with that or do you think that's just one of those theories? Yeah, no, absolutely. I know the times that we've played them when we're able to get some possession going in their zone, they struggle in their own end. They're not a uh, 
I don't think they're a great team below the goal line in their own end, and I think we really need to exploit that. We got to simplify our game. We got to put pucks into the uh, into the corners, or make sure that if we need to dump it, it's getting all the way to the end boards, and their D have to go pick them up. So they're like the 15 and one Green Bay Packers, <laughs> is what the question is. Pretty much, saying. pretty much. That's but. a sore subject. I know it's football, <laughs> but it's a sore subject. Hey, I'm not a football fan, so you can give it to me all you want. <laughs> well, let's talk about the NHL then, because I know yeah. you follow that, and you know we were talking last week about who we think. Um, is going to make the Stanley Cup Finals at the end of the show. Now, I, you know, honestly, I, I took the Rangers and the Blackhawks. I really think the Rangers are going to be there. I think the Hawks have some work, especially Crawford and his consistency, and you know, maybe some better play, you know, after that second line because I think there's a talent drop off there for the Hawks. But I, I you know, I, I look at another team in that division in St. Louis, and I forgot about the Blues last week, and they're going to be tough. And I guess if I were to look at it from that perspective, I would go Rangers. I'm still going to say Blackhawks because I got to have faith in my team. Okay, but I tell you what, I like I like St. Louis. I really like the Wild. I think that they're going to be tough, um, especially with the additions of Parisi and Suter, going to make them tough. And you can't count out the LA Kings. Yep. But do you think in the Eastern Conference, do you think the Rangers are a lock right now? Yeah, I would say so right now. Looking at the rosters, I think the Rangers are definitely going to be the team to beat. they got a lot of firepower, obviously. And they added Rick Nash. Nash. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I mean, that kind of speaks for itself for, right there. For like they're, peanuts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're uh, they're. <laughs> they pulled out all the stops. They got their, they got the guys in there that they wanted, and I think this is probably going to be their year. But uh, time will tell, and injuries happen in hockey, That's and who right. knows what will happen. That's so. right. And, and, and looking at that, you know, a lot of these guys didn't go overseas to play. And you don't know the conditioning level of the players. And that's going to play a role, obviously, in the shortened season. Um, I, I guess, you know, looking at it from a fan's perspective, what do you expect early in the season? Do you expect some pretty sloppy hockey, AJ? Or do you expect, you know, just guys with the adrenaline just playing above expectations? Yeah, well, I know some guys firsthand that were uh – Kind of vacationing a little bit and enjoying the free time off. And I know other guys that were. Any pictures for the show we can put up? <laughs> Not that I can show on okay. here. Okay, all right. <laughs> but no, can I. See I, them I, after the show? <laughs> okay, anyways, keep going. <laughs> There's, uh, there's other guys, though, that have been serious taking it uh, taking it like the season was going right now. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. I think it will be a little sluggish of a start. It's going to be more of a sprint than a, than a marathon, though. Teams are going to have to find their bearings pretty quick if they want to make the playoffs. And uh, I think it'll be an interesting season. Granted, I would like to have the entire thing. It should be a fun uh, next couple months watching it. Why is nobody talking about Pittsburgh? as a favorite i don't really is know it, and is it because of the crosby factor you don't know if he's going to yeah, stay healthy all year might or? be a little bit it's one of those things though it's kind of funny because they're there every year and they're always one of the top teams so i'm sure they're going to be there once the end rolls around too but uh i don't know we'll see what happens in, in any of those pictures do you look at it and go well she's not on skates <laughs> I just she always it. is on skates yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right that's for another show another day all right well good luck this weekend coach against austin thanks uh, go lot. ahead and relax and have some chow and then uh, we'll go ahead and talk to the boys coach awesome i appreciate it guys. all right coach aj dagenhardt on the chill coaches show on the cooley region sports network coming up next we'll talk to hunter anderson here on the chill coaches show would you like to be the first to know before quick trip raises the price of gas by receiving alerts on your cell phone to sign up text ktks to 75309 from there you'll click on the link to choose your favorite quick trip store you'll receive alerts before quick trip raises the price of fuel and you'll receive other money saving coupons too so text KTKS to 75309 to enroll or visit our website at quicktrip.com and click on Quick Trip Mobile. Message and data rates may apply. The Cooley Region Sports Network is your online sports connection. CRSN provides the latest breaking sports news in the Cooley Region before the next day's newspaper is delivered and before that TV or radio station does their 5 and 10 newscast. Live local sports coverage of your favorite teams anywhere you get the World Wide Web. And here's what's coming up on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Friday night is Hockey Night in the Cooley Region as the Analaska Hilltoppers host the West Salem Bangor Panthers at 6 p.m. Rick Frankie brings you the call from that game as well as bonus coverage in Rink 2 of the Omni Center with Timmy Culp keeping you up to date on the number two ranked Hilltopper girls in their battle with Brookfield. Cooley Region Sports Network. Live, local, and anywhere you can get the World Wide Web. C R. S N. Everything we do is to bring you back. 
Our tot spot makes shopping fun for you and the kids. Our signature meats like burgundy pepper spoon roast, ribs on a stick, and Oktoberfest bratwurst make meal prep a snap. Plus, our spectacular deli takes eating at home to a whole new level. Festival's Boomerang Theory. Innovation to bring you back. This is the Chill Culture Show from Buffalo Wild Wings on CRSN. Welcome back to the Chill Coaches Show on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Scotty Grand and at the rectangular table, as I like to call it, to some degree, Hunter Anderson's back with us. Hunter, how you doing, my friend? Doing good. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. You know, you, you, you come off of a tough series with the Minot Minotauros and uh, I, did you guys figure out what a Minotauro was over the weekend? Did you look it up? Did you guys get any information? I know the guys probably told you, or the rest of the guys that we were asking in the show last week, um, if what a Minotauro was. Yeah, so, I'm not quite sure. So I, I don't know. You don't know? What, yeah. do, you th what do you think it is? Uh, half. I think it's half bull, half man. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think that's what it. I've heard it is, yeah, but yeah, my analogy was is somewhere that around that somebody's pet science project gone wrong that yeah, they were free out in the creature, world or something. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> mythical creature in a yeah. really be a really bad sci-fi B movie yeah, is what yeah. it is. But <laughs> you know yeah, that that series, you guys knew it was going to be physical, uh, but you guys came out Friday night and you guys played right with them and ended up winning the game. And it was a big series for you guys to at least get a victory. Uh, talk about the morale of the locker room after this weekend series. Uh, it was a good. It was a good series between mine out. They're a tough team. They play a lot like us. They're a hard-nosed team, and they like the battle and that kind of stuff. So it was a good series, and um, I think uh, Friday's game, we, we played really well together, and everything was going well. And uh, I think Saturday, we just couldn't get things going, but we played hard, and it's not like we let down. It just didn't really uh, work out for us on the scoreboard. But Friday night was a positive game for sure for everyone. Uh, all four lines were playing well, and uh, Mac. Mac played really well, actually, so that, that helped me out. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, it's great playing with the guys so far, and it's been fun with AJ now. I'm not saying Hamry wasn't fun, but it's been it's kind of a new uh, new energy in the locker room, and everyone's excited to keep getting better every day. Well, Hunter, you got to be considered one of the <laughs> leaders of this team, no question with your experience and what you bring to the table. And I guess talk about that a little bit. You talked about Coach AJ and his style and his philosophy, a little bit different than Coach Hamry's. And what's been the funnest thing about working with Coach AJ so far that you've seen? Uh, all around, it's a lot more, I wouldn't say um, more freedom, but it's kind of letting us learn from our mistakes like Henry like, like teaching but that's just his philosophy and like, like how he coaches and stuff so um AJ's letting us kind of learn from like on ourselves and it's been good learning and so far um of course I'm a rookie and I got a lot to learn it's my first year um and more of the vets are kind of stepping in more and leading we kind of see that more now um with Henry gone but uh it, like the vets are doing a good job stepping up and um, I think now that since we're this far in the season, <coughs> um, like all the rookies are like have like playing better and have more uh, confidence in themselves because it's almost the end of the year, so everyone's more confident how they're playing, and that's a little bit easier to go to the locker room every day with. That, I guess that's why. You're Hunter Anderson on the Chill Coaches Show on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Don't forget, here at Buffalo Wild Wings Live, it is family night, $1.99 on the kids' menu. If you're out there listening right now want to stop in and check out the show, you know, it you know, you talk about the transition and the change, and you can see it on the ice over the weekend, and you touched on Mac, and, you know, Mac's the captain of this team, and, you know, quietly has to take the responsibility of the thoughts of the guys in the locker room with the C on his chest, but really stepped up in the role, had the one of the most incredible hat tricks that I've seen, you know, yeah. since I've been, you know, watching this franchise develop, and I, I, I tell you what, he's just such a good scorer. What does that do to help your game on the ice when you know you got a guy like Mac Attack that can put it pretty much from anywhere on the ice if you give him the opportunity? Yeah, me and Footy, like, setting him up, that's kind of <laughs> way we play, and he's been, he's been so far the guy this year, the go-to guy, when we need a goal, it's, it's going to be Mac, and um, it showed on Friday night that he can do it. Like, like he flat out can do it. Like he showed, he put, he put in three goals. He got a hat trick. Like it was amazing. Um, that period at the end was three minutes and 25. Yeah, minutes. it was nuts. Like our bench was two electric. Minutes. It was electric. So playing with him, I kind of know my role. Like I just need to create space for those two quick guys and 
Um, it's pretty easier. Like, no, like I don't know, they make plays, and we, we know where each other are going to be, and we all know how we're playing, and it's it's fun playing with those guys too. So, And Max has been great. He's a leader in the locker room, so it's been fun all around with him. You talked about footy, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, football's got the hoodie. I guess you guys got the footy. Yeah. Um, but th this guy this guy is just nonstop, and, and it's just – Every game is just an effortless, uh, well, I shouldn't say effortless because every play is effort with this guy, but it just seems like an effortless knowledge of kind of knowing what's going to happen on the ice. And I, I think your line has really started to turn into, obviously with the number one scoring line so effective, but it goes beyond that. I think the other lines are responding now uh, to the production that you guys are showing. Do you kind of see that a little bit? Yeah, um, I think just playing with, I think I've played one or two games without footy this year. So uh, those games are a little you different. Have separation anxiety. Yeah, separation. Yeah, I, I guess so <laughs> if you want to say that. But uh, it's been playing with someone for that amount of games has helped just me as a player and just how like knowing where what he's gonna do and that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm starting to get Mac. Um, Mac's starting to come to the equation where I'm I know he's gonna what he's gonna do and how he's gonna play and that kind of stuff, which makes it more comfortable for everyone else on the ice and that kind of stuff. So uh, it's been good and. We're all we're all clicking uh, as a whole as a team, so it's been good so far. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it you just can kind of see it. What I'm getting to, you know, a lot of the younger guys, I think, are really starting to pick up on what it takes to uh, really be effective. And I know you guys don't have the record per se that you would like to have. However, do you feel like this team is really starting to get some momentum behind it? Uh, because from what I heard from some of the fans and reading on Facebook and some other uh, social media outlets, they really liked what they saw this weekend against Minot. Yeah, um, everyone's starting to have a little more confidence. Um, it's I don't know I don't know if it's the coaching change, but it's new life, and I think every point actually like matters now. Not like it didn't matter before, but I think everyone just started to realize like we don't want our season to end. We wanna we wanna make the playoffs. Like everyone just I, I think everyone just, I don't say we didn't buy it earlier, but I think everyone just finally actually realized. We want to get to the playoffs. Does it does it help that AJ has been there? Yeah. I, I mean, it, it just yeah. really seems like you guys, and not to say that Coach Hamry's philosophies aren't correct because <laughs> it depends on the team he's playing with, obviously, mm -hmm. and yeah, how it's exactly. going to gel. Uh, but this team really has been – uh, really positive and kind of taking the wind beneath AJ's wings, if you want to say, yeah. uh, and, and really responded to his style. Is it because of the fact he doesn't let off the gas pedal? Yeah, everything's hard and hard nose, and if you're not hard, you're not going to play. So, like, if you got to gotta play hard, and we, we bought into Hamry and stuff, and that didn't really work for our team, but um, we're buying into AJ right now, and everyone's being positive behind AJ, and, um, like, I think it's his like for his, he started out with our team, so like it's going well, and I think everyone's trying to stay positive, even though we're not winning games. But I don't know, we gotta look for positives and. Hopefully we start winning games is what it comes down to. Yeah, and, and that's definitely the case. Now you, you play a pretty good team this weekend in the Austin Bruins. And, yeah. uh, you know, they've been very consistent throughout the year. I don't think we need to go into detail on how good they've been because obviously their record's one of the best in the league. But you guys always seem to play them tough, and, and you really you really try to kind of make them work for everything they get. Uh, there's been some series this year, not per se with the chill, but other teams where it's looked really easy for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but whenever I watch you guys play against Austin, uh, you guys are really, it seems like you take your game to another level. Do you think that's pretty accurate? Yeah, especially our last series, we were winning, I think, going to the third yes. period, and I don't know what happened. I don't know if we let off the gas or we ran out of gas would be the better way to put it, but I think with AJ now, we've been having more, a little more flow in our practices. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that or not. Oh, so yes, I've heard of it. I think we're all getting a little more, a little better shape, uh, not as many whistles in practice and stuff, so I think that's going to help us throughout the rest of the whole game, and um, just how we're playing, I think, now, I think he changed the. I don't really, he didn't really change the four check up, but we, I don't know, we're playing a little different style, more hard nose, and <clears throat> I think that'll help carry over um, against other teams too. But especially against Austin, we played well and hard against them, and I, I feel like, I don't know if it, the closeness or like, I don't know what it is, but we've played. I, we actually we've actually scored multiple or many goals against them, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. So I think we just got to play better in our in our D zone and. 
Well, just score, I guess. Score goals. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the guys talked about that last week, too, Hunter, um, that came to the show, that the flow of practice is more intense. And mm -hmm. you guys feel like as far as the conditioning goes, it, it's a little bit better now than what it was beforehand. Yeah. And do you think is, that's, is that what it takes to really beat a team like Austin as you can skate with them all the way through three periods? I think so, yeah. And then uh, if we're all playing more, I think it's going to be better. So if everyone's doing better and in better shape, I think we're all going to be playing more. It's going to be easier. Um, just for everyone to, I don't know, they're not going to be as tired and late in the game. So if more lines are playing throughout the game, that means everyone's playing better. So I think that will help us in the long-term run for just the flow of practice. So I think that's going to help us in games. I like the hat, by the way. I Thank just wanted you. to throw it out there. I, I know I know you're a Wild fan. You brought it yeah. up on the show last time you were here. But, but what's up with the Blackhawks hat, man? Uh, kind of my second favorite team. Like the Wild <laughs> struggle off and on. It's just a st pretty standard Minnesota team. I'm not, I'm not a Viking fan at all. I'm a Packer fan. But hey, I'd, ra I'd, rather, I'd rather not talk about that. Um, no, I don't think. Yeah, we discussed it a little bit. I referenced the 15-1 yeah. and one Green Bay Packers with the Austin Bruins a little while ago. Yeah. So, I don't think we'll do that right now. Yeah, so um, I, I guess I'm a Twins fan. But I'm a huge baseball guy, but I don't know, I'm in the wild. Pitchers and catchers reporting soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the Hawks, it, I don't know, I kind of like Taze. He's one of my, one of my favorite player. players, I guess you'd say. So, I don't know. Like he's, and Patrick Kane's a scorer, too. So yeah, he's, he's always going to stay with the team all year. A lot, uh, of, a lot of rumblings that he's on the training block and has been. I, I don't really know. I, the season's coming up. I'm pretty excited. It's always fun to go to the XL Energy Center, <laughs> watch games. It's always fun to go there. So it's fun watching the Wild, and I'm just happy the season's finally back, even if it's only like 40-some uh, games. Yeah, 42, 43 42, games, yeah. something like that. Uh, I, what, what's your take on the Stanley Cup final? Who you got? Uh, I, I hope the Wild are in it, but if they have a meltdown like they did last year, but I don't think they will because they got crazy and Suter, but Defense is still there. Defense is still there. The Backstrom is pretty good. I, I think, I, yeah. So they got the goaltending. They got they added a score. They added another solid defenseman. So they added players. It's just the players got to play, I guess. So Miku Koivu gonna stay healthy for a whole. I year? hope so. He should be healthy right now. I don't know what he's doing, but <laughs> <laughs> he should be, he should have been healthy. I know according he's probably to, according to AJ. Some <laughs> guys are just on vacation, hanging out with random people and taking pictures and we won't get in any further yeah. on that but uh, so what you so you got you got you hope Minnesota makes it out of the west who you got in the east uh Pittsburgh in the east are always good but they lost stall so I don't know how they'd be yeah oh uh, play Carolina with his brother it's pretty Car interesting I, I don't yeah they all have a first good line and they got Cam Ward but I don't know how uh, deep they are the Rangers are always good. They're in the same conference with the Wild, aren't they? So no, no. The Rangers are over in the east. They're in the east, so yep. maybe the Rangers. They have Nash and Gabrick and Lundqvist, and they're they have really good defense on too. So I'd probably pick the Rangers. I know everyone's saying Rangers and Wild are favorites, but just coming in, I'd say probably those two teams. But um, if Kovalchuk comes, I don't know. The Devils are pretty good too. You never know. So well, they pay him enough. They pay. Come. They pay him a ton. <laughs> so yeah, they do pay him a lot. Um, I know one wasn't there one contract over like 100 million yeah, or something and then like they that. Had to re, they had to renegotiate yeah, it because yeah. it was it was just a bunch of mess. But yeah, so you got the Rangers in the Wild, so that's pretty good, Hunter. Yeah. I'd say I'd say you know the Rangers have been pretty much everyone that myself included and Rick. Yeah. I think every we've all said the Rangers out of the East. So yeah, right last, on the mark. Yeah, last year for the Stanley Cup, I did like a bracket or whatever for like the hockey thing I did. And I had the Kings going to the finals against the Rangers, and I was like, I, I don't. Wow. Yeah, I was. I had the Kings winning. It was. A, it was really. It was a really bold pick. But like, wow. I won the. Yeah, yeah. I, I have the overall like. Bra I won the like bracket. You won the can of soda. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like it was a picture of like Gabriel Landeskog and uh, <laughs> Nugent Hopkins like autographed for, like for their draft. So it was That's like cool. it was kind of cool, but like I was I don't know I, for some reason I was like the Kings are gonna go to the Stanley Cup, so I was. Just, uh, and they 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 could do it again too. Like I don't know, they're they're a really good team, and Quick's a good goaltender. So yeah, yeah. no question. Uh, a lot of things to talk about. Well, Hunter, good luck this weekend against Austin. Thanks for taking a couple minutes yeah, with us you. again on the Chill Coaches Show. Thank you. All right, Hunter Anderson here on the Chill Coaches Show on the Cooley Region Sports Network. We're going to come back and talk to a pair of defensemen at the same time, and hopefully Lexi's got enough food in him that he can speak. Alexei Mustaniemi and Derek O'Flynn on the Chill Coaches Show. Coming up next. I'm distracted. I see a big thing of wings over there. <laughs> yeah. And then and then some, some guy's waving a kid's menu over there. I don't know which one I'm getting. Rick and Scotty will return in a moment from Buffalo Wild Wings in Onalaska on CRSN. Bring the action. 
America's best value in an Econo Lodge in La Crosse, Wisconsin is the home of the Cooley Region Chills guest opponents. Rooms are available with refrigerators, microwaves, coffee makers, free Wi-Fi, and continental breakfast. Mention the Chills special daily, weekly, and monthly rates when you book your stay at the America's Best Value in an Econo Lodge in La Crosse, Wisconsin, where people stay by choice, not by chance. Do you Kasasa? Do you have the financial equivalent of a green thumb? If you Kasasa, you do. With Kasasa, I get to make things grow because it gives me money to help me save. My free checking account gives me massive interest that goes automatically into my saver account. Mix in nationwide ATM fee refunds, and the next thing, I've got a whole lot of green. So do you Kasasa? Don't just bank. Kasasa. Kasasa Cash and Saver. Only available at America's finest community banking institutions. Certain restrictions apply. See financial institution for details. Kasasa. Now at Cooley Bank. Member FDIC. Domino's of La Crosse and Alaska is a proud sponsor of the Cooley Region Chill. Check out Domino's early week carryout special. Pick up a large three topping pizza for just $7.99 every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. For a complete Domino's menu, special offers, or to order online and track your orders, go to Domino's.com and like us on Facebook at Domino's La Crosse. This is the Chill Culture Show from Buffalo Wild Wings on CRSN. Welcome back to the Chill Culture Show on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Scotty Gran with a pair of defensemen. They actually played with each other this weekend in the state. Am I right? Yeah. Hey, I did oh, yeah. my research here. Did my research. Give me some props, okay? This is this is good. Nobody else does. <laughs> it's okay, though. Derek O'Flynn, Alexei Mustadiami joining me here on the Chill Coaches Show. Guys, you know, the, the Minotauro series, you know, you came out Friday night with a big victory, 4-2, to two, and definitely needed in the yeah. divisional standings. Saturday night, though, though it was a loss, you guys hung in there with them the whole time. I think last time you guys uh, would probably agree their physical game probably got the better of you, but not this weekend. I think you guys stood up to them quite well. And and uh, I guess, uh, what's your take on the weekend? Were you guys pretty happy overall with that? Oh, we were definitely, uh, Friday we were definitely happy. That was a big win for us, especially uh, our first win against against Minot. Um, I think we were, came out a little bit satisfied on, on Saturday, hoping they would be a little flat and everything, knowing they didn't want to play at 4.30. Um, but I, we were a little disappointed about that, but overall was, uh, we did pretty well. Yeah, Lexi, what's your take on the series? Yeah, I think we, we came out really strong on Friday. We were good, but then on Saturday, like Flynn said, we were, we were too much satisfied. We got out, outworked, outplayed, and just couldn't finish. So. Now, now I know the last time you guys played against these guys, there was a little couple, a little, little bit of jaw jacking between the two teams oh, yeah. as far as uh, maybe a possible setup for a uh, big bomber here from this guy. <laughs> maybe for that's the rumor on the street. Now, Lexi, did did you get challenged at all this weekend by anybody? Because I heard last series there was some chirping at you coming from the Minot bench. Uh, not really, not really this weekend. Not a whole lot. They stayed away from you for the most part. Something little, always, you know, in front of the net, but that's pretty much it. No one really wants to mess with the big number seven. No, yeah. no, I don't either, especially when I watch him at the table devouring food. I, <laughs> no. I get I get really intimidated. He's and, a monster. Yeah, well, he is a monster. And, I, and I, you know, I, you know, Lexi knows. I mean, I've seen him outside of the rink and other avenues. So, you know, this guy, I tell you what, you don't challenge him to an eating contest because you will lose. That's all <laughs> we're going to say about that. But, you know, going back to the Minots weekend, and how about Mac attack? I mean, I know this oh, is your guys' time. I know, but Mac Jansen, I mean, now he's second in the league in goals. And to have a hat trick <laughs> A little under two <laughs> minutes and 30 seconds, was, I would say, is pretty impressive. impressive. Very impressive. On that the one, really uh, I think I had the assist yes, on you did. second yep. or third. So I'm you beat exactly me to the punch. Sure. Um, it, he was celebrating by himself in the corner. I thought it was Hendrickson that scored the goal. Everyone went, went to Hendrickson, <laughs> Max over there just selling it by himself. That's when you play REM. Yeah. All losing my religion right there on that goal. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Lexi, you've played you played some hockey overseas. You've done some different things with the sport, and I know Derek, you're still growing too. But have you ever seen anything like that? You know, playing? No, I haven't. But you know, Mac is he's a natural goal scorer, so you can't like. You never know what he's going to do. He's the guy who can do that. Yeah, you guys yeah. think that first line with him and Footy and Hunter Anderson, I, 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 would you put them with some of the best lines in this league right now? I know that the record for the chill 
you look at that, you yeah, kind of yeah. you kind of raise your eyebrow at that comment. But you look at the consistency of how they played and and their numbers. I mean, they're all in the plus category, and they seem to be on every play just almost out physicaling the team they're playing. From what I've seen, do you guys see that from your perspective when you're watching? The I game? definitely think so. I, as um, when we are in the offensive zone, they definitely create a good offense down there, cycling and whatnot, making their chances. Uh, and they're really good defensively too, getting back and playing hard in the D zone to be able to get back in the offensive zone. So it's, I'd, I'd say that they can hang up there with many of the top lines. Oh yeah, for sure. And they play well together like Footy and Anderson, they played together like pretty much the whole did, season. Where did, where did I Footy think. come from? I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 mean, I, I hear that you got the hoodie in baseball or in football. I don't know if there's an IE acronym in baseball that I know of. I'm sure I could make one up if I wanted to. I could find it. But where did Footy come from? I'm not really sure. Well, I mean, he already had that nickname when I came in the team, uh -huh. like a month or two into the season, uh, when I was traded here, and I. I don't know, Faust and footy, it just, I guess it just He's happens. not like one of those off-ice Bigfoot hunters, is he, that you see on TV? Oh, no. Yeah, that would make sense to me if that was the case, but what do you think, Lexi? I don't know either. Like, yeah. That's how it's always been for me. Like, I don't know him from the past. Like, there are a bunch of guys on the team who know him, you know, from the past. That's just a nickname. Yeah, I mean, and that's what happens. You just get labeled with something and it sticks. And, I mean, I don't want to talk about the nicknames I've been labeled with because yeah, we can go on and on here. on this show. Yeah, so it's that's the same here. Yeah, Rick knows about them, so I'm sure he'll bring him up at some point. <laughs> but anyways, getting back to uh, some hockey in, in the Austin Bruins. And uh, this is a team that you guys have been so close many times to taking them out. Oh, yeah. And the record speaks for itself with Austin. I mean, obviously, they're one of the best teams in the league. And you look at the numbers, scoring-wise, they're one of the best teams in the league so different from the Austin Bruins teams I've seen in the past and other fans have seen as, you know, really, they were more of a physical, in-your-face, out technique you type team, and now it seems like they can just snipe from anywhere on the ice, and it, it just magically just it happens for them. So, I, I guess, uh, do you guys see that, that they're uh, and, you know, Derek, I, don't, I know you haven't really played against them that much, and, and Lexi, but this season, but in the past, they were just so different. It's, it's like a totally different franchise right now, and on the ice, do they just do little things better than other teams? What do you they, think about that? They just that? work really hard. They have a lot of hardworking guys that will just battle for everyone else. Um, personally, I don't think they are the like on the ice the best team. Um, I know like we can compete with them, and we just haven't been able to finish in the third against them. But um, I feel like we faced harder opponents mm -hmm. other than Austin. They just they work really well as a team. And, and Lexi, do you agree with that? Because a lot of people that I talk to and a lot of things I've read agree with that about the Austin Bruins. I mean, they got a great record, but they're a little soft on the back end. And and I think right. the numbers show that to some degree. However, they don't put themselves in those situations, and that's how they can pull these games out. So, do you agree with Derek that you know? Maybe the numbers are a little skewed that this team is good, but are they an elite team? That's the question with them. I for sure agree with him. You know, in the offensive end, they're threat all the time. They can score from everywhere, but when you get down to de their end, it's doable. I mean, Definitely. we can play against them for sure. Oh yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, Coach AJ has got such a different style, and I think everybody's talked about the flow of practice. And that, and you know, Hunter brought it up in his interview. It was brought up two or three times last weekend. Do you guys see that too? That the flow of practice, there's so much more. I guess you could say a positive, upbeat morale going into practice every every yeah. time. But you guys really feel like. The contributions you guys are making and, and you're learning on the fly that's a better philosophy maybe for guys at your stage of hockey uh, in this in in this facet I mean do you feel that way and uh, I mean AJ's experience I mean obviously that helps too because he's been here he understands what it takes to get through this and do other things I mean do you like that about what's going on right now with the team I do I do practices I have been a lot more upbeat and I mean we're all moving pretty much all practice now is uh, not much talking and it's when we do it's just a kick in the butt just to get restarted and get back going to the drills and whatnot um, but I do like the focus in the direction of the team that's everyone's headed right now it's definitely helping with everyone's lungs too we're all skating pretty hard <laughs> skating pretty hard Lexi you feel the same way I do I yeah. do there's a lot more energy going on you have to take more right food now. out of your locker now do you have to share more food at practice <laughs> Yeah, I usually I take Lang's food. <laughs> I, stole, I stole one of your oranges today. Yeah. <laughs> I stole one of your oranges. 
if you need, all later on. yeah, uh, all right. Those now I know if I need a pregame snack where I'm going, and it's yeah. not going to be at yeah. the concession stand at the Omni Center. So <laughs> sorry if uh, anybody's listening out there from the Omni. I apologize, but man, that's funny. All right, guys. Well, good luck this weekend against the Bruins. Thanks for taking some time for joining me here on the Chill Coaches Show. Enjoy the rest of your evening here at Beat Ups and Chow Down. What do you say? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. All that's right. Great. Alexei Mustaniemi and Derek O'Flynn on the Chill Coaches Show on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Coming up next, we're going to talk to Randy Rusan. He is a beat writer for NAHL.com. He covers the North Division. Also, he is a talk show host on ESPN 1400. We'll get his opinion on some of the shakeups that are going down here in the North American Hockey League. Coming up next on the Chill Coaches Show. Max has been a good leader for us. Uh, he's definitely drawn interest from scouts. A lot of it, you know, we got to have some success as a team to draw scouts. we got to continue to do it he's doing on a consistent basis. Rick and Scotty will return in a moment from Buffalo Wild Wings in Onalaska on CRSN. Like a puck flying across the ice, Beaver Builder Supply has a fleet of trucks to deliver your building supplies at warp speed. Looking for roofing or siding? Thinking of a new garage or window replacement? Beaver Builder Supply is your solution store. If you have questions or for order pickups, we're located in Holman, right on Highway 53. Don't burn your time wandering around a big store. Come to Beaver Builder Supply for immediate top flight service and quality supplies. Go chill. Do you, Kasasa? Do you have a free checking account that tells it like it is? With Kasasa Cash, I get just what I need. Massive interest paid back to me in straight up cash. No points or point less, as I like to call them. Plus, no minimum balance and nationwide ATM fee refunds. Now that's to the point. Do you, Kasasa? Don't just bank. Kasasa. Kasasa Cash. Only available at America's finest community banking institutions. Certain restrictions apply. See financial institution for details. Kasasa. Now at Cooley Bank. Member FDIC. Founded by Tony Zak in 1999, Empire Development has been the area leader in home remodeling and repair. Is it time for a residential or commercial remodel? Check out EmpireDevelopment.com or come into our newly remodeled showroom in Onalaska. There you can see our products and meet our on-staff interior designer. Hi, I'm Katie, the interior designer at Empire Development. I would love to help you design your dream remodel. Like us on Facebook or check us out at EmpireDevelopment.com. This is the Chill Culture Show from Buffalo Wild Wings on CRSN. Welcome back to the Chill Coaches Show on the Cooley Region Sports Network, live from Buffalo Wild Wings, where it's family night. Get on out here, $1.99 off the kids' menu. I think we've determined I cannot eat off the kids' menu, though I've tried a couple times. Joining me now on the hotline, we got Randy Rosan. How you doing, Randy? How, what's up? Uh, pretty good, man. Everything's good. Yeah, can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine, man. Fantastic. All right. Well, Randy, you know, I, I know that you work for ESPN 1400. You're a beat writer for the NAHL.com and JuniorHockey.com. I just want to get your opinion on a couple things. Now, I know you cover the North, um, and, and I've been really following the Sioux really closely outside of what we got here going on in the Central. And it seems like this team uh, right now in the Sioux, and you can't forget about Jamestown, who's making a run right now, too, right behind him, two points off at 53 points. But you look at the Sioux, and, and they just seem to have all the attributes. They got goal scoring, good defense, and I tell you what, their goaltending is tremendous. Well, you're absolutely right. And you know what? This is a team that was well put together, that has been well put together, and they did inherit the North, uh, the uh, Traverse City North Stars team uh, from last season. But from the uh, beginning of this season to now, uh, Bruno Braniola, the coach and general manager, has brought in some good players. Uh, he brought in, as you mentioned, goaltending. It, it, yes, he did inherit Zach Nagel for it from Traverse City, but he got uh, Tyler Marble from the Ontario Junior League. Tyler Marble is a commit to play at Lake Superior State uh, Division One next season, and Bruno has done a good job. Don't forget, you look at their record. They're in first place. The Eagles began the season 0-3 in one of the showcases. Right. Look what they've done since, and it's a good race between the Eagles and Jamestown for top spot, no question about it. Now, I kind of read a little bit uh, your, your beat that you had up on uh, NAHL this week, and uh, I know you cover the North, and you do a very good job with it, by the way, as I got to read some of the archive reports, so fantastic work. Uh, you, you, you talked about Jamestown, and, and really uh, just the fan base and how they're really rallying around this team right now, and uh, you know, you, you look at that and how they're able to just really stay in games and just keep people interested. What's the secret to the Ironmen right now at this point? I think it's the uh, it's the general manager uh, uh, coach Dan Dakawa. 
And you know what? Uh, you take the coaching uh, even out of it. Uh, you know what? Whatever Dan has done as a coach, whatever UGI Ramona, his assistant, has done as a coach, if you look at what Dan has done as a general manager, uh, the number of players that he's brought in in the off-season trades, you look at the Jamestown roster, and more than half of the players on that roster were brought in by trade, uh, including Reed Nemack, who's since gone on the goaltender to Bemidji State uh, Division One. But their top players uh, in the last two seasons have all been brought in by trades. Luke Gertis came over from Topeka. You look at the other guys in the lineup, Ross Pavic, uh, brought in by trade. Uh, Dylan Zink, the defenseman, brought in from your division, the Central Division. Ryan Doucette from Odessa. Uh, uh, Tyler Minks from Odessa. It's been good work by Dan Dekaiwa in his position as general manager. I think that's really responsible for what James Todd has been able to do. Uh, that the Ironman won just 19 of 60 games last year. They've already won more than that this time around. He does have a lot of 1992 first year players, so really, James Todd, they're going for broke this season, and, uh, and you know what? Why not? Talking to Randy Rusan, the uh, one of the beat writers for NHL.com, JuniorHockey.com, and a talk show host for ESPN 1400 on the Chill Coaches Show. Uh, you know, I want to talk to you about realignment a little bit. I know that you've got some information on that, uh, and what do you think the league's going to do here? Obviously, with the North, you look at you got eight teams in the North, and then you look at the West, and they got four teams. So, I mean, obviously, there's going to be something going to be going down here shortly because, I mean, it's really odd to kind of see the structure that is in the NHL as far as teams and, and how the divisions are broken down. So what have you heard, and what do you think is going to happen here? Well, something's got to give for sure, and you look at uh, maybe the top prospects uh, game coming up at uh, the Choice Sports, Sports Center in Troy, uh, next month with that February 18th to 20th, I believe it is. Anyway, the way that they have aligned uh, that with uh, the Dakota group, you know, the front, the Frontier group, uh, the Great Lakes group, the Midwest group, the Texas group, and then, of course, the U U18 team. Uh, there's going to be another team in the league next season from Minnesota that makes it 25. And Wenatchee, uh, the rumor is they're heading off to uh, the British Columbia Hockey League. We may lose another team. There will be teams, of course, that file for dormancy, but... Just supposing we're at 24 teams uh, next year, you really want to go 8-6-6-4 uh, six, six, again. I would think there'll be some sort of realignment, and maybe if you look at the structure of the way they have the prospects tournament set up, maybe, maybe that's kind of a precursor of things to come. I don't know for sure. I do know that though, that changes are in the works. Uh, what those changes are, though, I really don't know. What kind of changes are there at the pre? You touched on it, how the prospects tournament's going to be kind of coordinated. Can you kind of give the fans a little bit here on the coaches show uh, what you're talking about here as far as structure? Well, okay, there's going to be the different uh, different teams, and uh, there's going to be the Dakota group, which will be Austin, Bismarck, Brookings, and uh, Minot, along with Aberdeen. Uh, the head coach of that team will be Chris Hope from uh, Austin. The Frontier group will be Wenatchee, Fairbanks. Kenai River, and Fresno. And then in the Great Lakes group, Jamestown, the Sioux Eagles, Johnstown, Fort Huron, and the Michigan Warriors. And then over to the Midwest group, which they're going to call that team, will be uh, Topeka, Kalamazoo, Janesville, Springfield, and Cooley Region. And Cooley Region will send three players. They're basing how they're going to send the players and everything else by how the teams are rated. Uh, you, you look at Austin in the Dakota group, they'll send five players. They're in first place. In the Frontier group, Wenatchee sends five. They're in first place. In the Great Lakes group, the Jamestown sends five. Uh, then there's some teams sending four. Cooley Region in the Midwest group just sends the three. They're near the bottom of the league. And uh, the Texas group, of course, I forgot to mention them, Amarillo, Texas, Corpus Christi, Wichita Falls, and Odessa. The lower teams will send three. That would be Odessa, the, the, the worst percentage in the entire North American Hockey League. But uh, basically they're trying to do it uh, by structure, by standing. The head coach and the assistant coaches are from the top two teams in each uh, group. That's what they're calling it, uh, Dakota group, Frontier group, Great Lakes group, Midwest group, Texas group. So that's how they're doing that. One thing that I really don't agree with, though, is uh, having um, Division One commit players uh, in this. Uh, if it's a top prospects tournament, that's good. All the scouts are around, but uh, and there are going to be National Hockey League scouts there. But let's face it, uh, most of the players going anywhere from here right now will be to yeah. Division One, and a lot of players have their D1 commitments. So why not just take those people out of the equation, those players, and leave it um, 
open for players who don't have the D1 commits yet. And I, I think that's a great point, Randy. And I, you know, honestly, you look at those uh, players that already have made their future plans, and yeah, obviously they're a top prospect, but going mm -hmm. forth with their careers, and you got guys like Mac Jansen, and I'm going to throw it out there, who uh -huh. have not committed uh, to any college or any any other division school, and he's second in the league right. in goals. I mean, obviously there's a, a opportunity for a guy like that to step in and get noticed at a top prospects tournament. Not saying he's going because it hasn't been announced yet, um, but I'm throwing it out there. That's That could be a possibility and something to think about. Yeah, there you go. And you look at your team in Cooley Region and uh, some of your better players besides Jansen. I mean, I know he's a 93, sure. but you know, you got some good 1994 players yes, in there. Uh, Hunter Anderson's the guy that, that comes to mind. A good uh, big power forward and a guy who, a former high school football player and a guy who was uh, uh, grown leaps and bounds uh, with your program, and you would hope that a guy like that would be in there, but with just three players from the chill, who knows who they're going to be. Yeah, no question, and I appreciate the insight as always, Randy, and I'm sure we'll get you on again. I'm not done yet with you, though. I wanted to talk about a team in the north that I'm really surprised where they're at right now, and that's Port Huron. Uh, you went into the season, and you looked at the you looked at the north, and a lot of people were really thinking Port Huron was going to be that team after last year's season of destiny, kind of, for to some degree, that maybe uh, possibly could be a contender for the Robertson Cup. What's happened to the Port Huron Fighting Falcons? You know what, and you're exactly right. I mean, they've got some players, D1 commits for next season already. Uh, Alex Floki, uh, Ian Miller, uh, Mark uh, Van Ock, who's gone on to the United States Hockey League. There's a lot of good talent. Oh, Brett DeAndrea, who came back from the USHL, he's going to Bowling Green. They've got guys, up-and-coming guys like Alex Archibald, a good goaltender like Max Belosic. Yep. And I'm really uh, befuddled by what's going on in Port here. And, some people point to the fact that uh, the ownership is a little bit shaky with Mary Beth Hayes, and she's a little bit flighty. And I've talked to her on the phone, and I will tell you, yeah, she's a little bit flighty. <laughs> uh, she changes coaches and general managers like uh, we change socks, man. You look at this year, she fired Steve Shannon. and I mean, Steve Shannon came in with a shaky reputation, but she's the one who hired him. Uh, they were 10-6 and six when she fired Steve Shannon. They were below 500 with Mike Gershon at the helm, although Mike Gershon and the Fighting Falcons did win a couple of big games on the weekend. But it's got to be with ownership because since she's been in there, they've gone from last place to first place, now in the middle of the pack, and she's changed uh, coaches from uh, the first coach, Ernie Hickey, the first general manager, Marty Haddad, she had the coach of the year last year, and Bill Warren who was also the general manager. Uh, she parted ways with him. And, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, they say it's true blondes have more fun. Well, take a look at, at a picture of Mary Beth. Did you say Marv Schott's running that team? I'm sorry. Pardon me? I, is Marv Schott running that team? Yeah, <laughs> you know what? The old Cincinnati Reds owner, she might have a minority <laughs> stake for sure. Oh, Randy, good stuff. I, I, I wanted to get your opinion on the Chill organization here at the end of the show. Of course, the show is the Chill Coaches Show. We like uh -huh. to hear other people's opinions about where this franchise is going. And, you know, I think Michelle Bryan has done a great job as the owner of this team, really adding some, some stability. You talk about flightiness. I mean, there was a lot of flightiness going on, and I think Michelle's added that local, local ownership, a lot of stability. I think uh -huh. she's making some good decisions. What did you think about the release of John Hamry? I know you heard about that through the grapevine. Right, right, and uh, let me just begin by answering the first part of your question. I've heard nothing but good about the Cooley Region Chill uh, from people who I talk to, you know, uh, coaches from uh, Northern Michigan, Joey Sean, uh, Frank Anzalone, who covers the NCAA uh, for the Calgary Flames of the NHL. It's got a good reputation, and Michelle is well-respected. You talk to some of the governors from around the league who are on these conference calls, you know, Mo Manta from Michigan and stuff like that, and Bruno uh, from the Sioux Eagles. And, um, you know what, there's, there's stability there with that franchise now. I guess they just have to stay the course with the new coach, A.J., and, and, and move forward. The best players on that team are young players, but you're, you really do hear all good things about Michelle. And one thing, uh, one of the parents from uh, your team told me, she said, they said about her, uh, she's a, uh, uh, it's a great organization, a great owner, but they're better people. And you like to hear things like that in, in junior hockey circles. As far as the coaching change, you know, I talked to John Hamley on the phone when he got hired. I knew uh, John a little bit before he got to Cooley Region. Yep. Uh, from his time as an assistant coach with the Michigan Warriors, uh, first class guy all the way. But uh, you know what? When a change has to be made, you have to agree with the people who are the bosses because you know what? The bosses may, may not always be right, but they have the right to be the bosses. And uh, you hear all good things about John uh, beforehand this year, maybe. 
maybe not as much. You know, maybe some of his ways were a little bit uh, far-reaching. Uh, I, I, I'm not too sure. I, I'm not around there. I, I can't say for sure. I'm just relating to you what I hear. Sure. But uh, you know what? I heard, good, I heard good things about John. I still hear good things about John. But I hear good things about AJ, too. And here's a guy that played in the USHL, a guy that played Division One. He's from your area. So, I mean, uh, you, you guys are 2-2 two and two with him at the helm. He's changed a few things up. I've read the stories in the in your local paper. I've listened to your show a few times. So, uh, you know what? Uh, well, I'm glad you listened to the show. You're deficient, but I hear all good things about your organization. That's for sure. I'm glad you listened to the show, Randy. We appreciate it. No question. I know. Hey, no problem. I know man. Rick wishes he could be here with us today. He's a little under the weather, so he wanted to. He wanted to thank you for coming on, as do I, and we appreciate the uh -huh. insight. And we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, anytime, man. You got my number. Give me a call. Yeah, I got it, man. Randy Rusan from JuniorHockey.com, NAHL.com, and ESPN 1400. Thanks for taking some time with us today. Anytime. All right. There he is, Randy Rusan, and that's going to end the Chill Coaches Show for today. Um, don't forget to come on down to Buffalo Wild Wings and enjoy $1.99 off the kids' menu. It is family night tonight, and I believe our next broadcast here on the Cooley Region Sports Network, let me look at the calendar. I believe Rick has got the Wasalem uh, Bangor Panthers and Onalaska Hilltoppers hockey game this Friday at 545, so come check that out at the Onalaska Omni Center, and, of course, check it out on the Cooley Region Sports Network. For Timmy Culp on the camera. I'm Scotty Graham. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been the Chill Coaches Show. Buffalo Wild Wings in Onalaska. Check out the archive presentation of tonight's show and all webcasts on CRSN. Go to crchill.com and click on the CRSN logo. Cooley Region Sports Network. CRSN. Live, local, and hear it anywhere you can get the World Wide Web. Shut it off!